if you are in this world, you want to be, have your liberty. You want to be able to wake up, choose a place in the world and say, today, this is where I'm going to stay. Today, I want to sleep in Miami, provided you have the money. But with Africans, there is a problem. How can you do that? And this is where Africans problem lies. So we have a problem with our passport. And that's the reason why most Africans would like to change their passport or have a chance to have a different passport. So obviously we can do what we want. Breaking news, Teo Ana, a Nigerian YouTuber with a Nigerian passport, purchased a Caribbean passport. Hello everyone, welcome once again. It's your boy Kofi Sikse, but you can definitely call me Sikse. As you can see today, I'm not surrounded by the snow. So we are definitely in a place where there is sun. If you want to know where I am, just go to the last video that I posted and you will definitely have more stories about that. More videos are coming. So today I'm going to, this is most likely one of the most simplest videos that I've ever made here on YouTube. Uh, it's going to be a reaction, my thought about this subject in, in general. And I wanted to make this video because uh, I was watching Teo Eina, I think that's uh, his name, the pronunciation. Sorry if I didn't pronounce it very well. And I wanted, I wanted to make a video about this topic as well because uh, as an African, all Africans we know we've been through this thing and we, we've experienced it. I'm going to leave the full video link in the description and obviously you can watch, uh, you can go and watch the video, subscribe to his channel as well. He's one of the biggest YouTubers that we have in Africa. One thing that I wanted us to discuss, so my first passport that I ever had was a Ghanaian passport and the Ghanaian passport that I had was the blue passport. I've never had the green passport because obviously you understand when I, when I, when I terminate the, the story. So I traveled from Ghana, I was a tippity, I was very, very young and my parents took me to Italy. When I got to Italy, since I was a minor, I had a chance through my parents to have an Italian passport, but my parents never applied for the Italian passport. So. I tried to torment my daddy so many times, but he didn't want to give me the he didn't want to give me the chance. So what my daddy told me was, when you have the chance, you apply it for yourself. So that means that I was supposed to stay in Italy for ten years, and after that, I will apply for the passport. That wasn't a pleasant thing. So what I had to do was just to wait. Now, one thing to know that in Italy we have various ways to get a passport. Every country, you understand, you have all the various ways for you to get a passport. Now, Teo was talking about he purchased the passport and that's what he said and he said it was like around 150,000 I know every process actually has its own way you have your ways and means that you pay for a passport because when the passport is not your 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 you are not from that place you're not being you're not the citizen of the place obviously you have to pass through their uh, process their method for you to get the passport when I got to Italy one thing that made me feel that Africans are not well treated especially when we talk about the passport and it's a passport it, had not, it, ha it has nothing to do with you being black. I wanted to travel a bit when I came here and I had the chance because you have to be, I think that, that time you had to be like 15 or 16 years for you to be able to travel alone. So at that time when I, when I, was, I came here in Italy, that was way back in the time when I was very, very young. So uh, it, Europe, was, Europe was Europe, but they, had, they never had the chance to be the European Union, the Schengen, you know, you understand? All these kind of things. Uh, you, Italy was still in the, in, the, in the era where their currency was still leader, so there was no euro in the, in the game. And traveling outside, with, even with the documents that we had, we had no chance to go to places like Slovenia, places like Austria. We had no chance. So then, I think in early 2001, 2001, 2002 or 2003, there they gave us the chance that whoever was a permanent resident here, could go outside without visa. So in the Schengen, so that was the period where Europe was were going. The Europe had a, they gave the chance because they, they they signed for the Schengen agreement. So we had the chance to travel. What happened is that I actually started travel traveling around. It wasn't an easy thing with our passport. So you get there. I was being arrested in uh, in Norway. So when Teo said I was being arrested, I was like, oh my God, I went through this thing. So they locked me, my friend and my friend's girlfriend at that time, they locked us in, in Norway because there was something about, you know, the passport and the, the Italian documents, the permanent residence. It was just a simple thing. We explained and the guy said, no, we need to uh, further understand this thing. So we have to uh, go into details to understand more. And he locked us. He locked us. Man, he locked us. <laughs> And we're being locked to wait 
for Italy at that time, our police, whatever had, whatever they do, the documents were clear, they were closed. So we were, we had to wait for them to open, to respond, to say that okay, our documents or everything is on point. Applying for a UK visa, oh my God, every Ghanaian, whoever is around here want to visit the UK. They want to see how the UK is. They want to know how, uh, how London or other places are. We had to apply for a visa. And you know how it is to apply for a visa, especially when you're in a place like Italy. Because the rate countries, you understand, if you are an immigrant in Italy, immigrant in Italy is not the same immigrant in Canada. You might be two Ghanaians, but you are not on the same level, you understand? It really made me feel like, gosh, I don't want to keep the pa this passport with me anymore. I no, and, and, and I said no disrespect to this passport, but one thing that I decided is that huh, it is over. I have to find myself a way to get to a passport that will permit me to move wherever I want. Thanks to God, I had 10 years in this country. I had the chance to apply for the citizenship and here it is not very easy. It is 10 years. So 10 years, once, when, once you're done with 10 years, the last four years of your 10 years, you need to work to have something that they call code. is a document that explains your financial situation here that you are uh, qualified for and you need to work at least the last four years. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a long time since I applied for my, my citizenship. That needs to cover you and your family as well. So thanks to God, I managed after the 10 years, I managed to get it. And after that, I applied for the, the, the passport and it, it rates between two, 730 days. That's what they say. So it's within, it's within two years to four years for you to get the response. And finally, if your process is positive, they would definitely give you your citizenship. So you can apply for European passport. I got a European passport and I went to Canada. This is what I wanted to tell you guys. I went to Canada. Once I, once I arrived to Canada, I had to go outside Canada because I had to activate my work permit. So when I went to Canada and I got to the US border, the New York Champlain US border, that was where I understood that passport actually make difference. You might be a citizen of a different country today and the next day you are a citizen of another different country. You might be there yesterday, go there today or the next day and your treatment would definitely be different. So let me tell you what happened. I went to the US border, so to the home, Homeland Security, I think that's the name, that's how they call them, and I had to go outside. So I had to pass through them, go outside of Canada, and come back to Canada for me to activate my work permit. When I went there, the guy took my passport and asked me, how did you get European passport? I started asking me questions that were not, you understand. But in mind, I just answered them. And after that, that guy, in the office, the other guy, a different guy in the office, asked me, don't you want to visit New York? You are here and you, it is six something, it was six o'clock in the morning. I do want to visit, visit, visit New York. I never understood this thing. And I was like, how can an, an, uh, an agent working for the Homeland Security ask me to visit New York? And he was like, New York is very beautiful. You can just go, I mean, it's not that far from here. It's just like two hours of drive, two hours, 30 minutes drive, and you, you're gonna be there. If you wanna go to Albany, the New York capital, you can actually drive like 45 minutes from here and you're gonna be there one hour or whatever, and you're gonna be there. And I was like, I'm not interested. This guy was treating me very different. Now, someone with the green passport, the ECOWAS passport, the ECOWAS passport, they were giving that person a different treatment. The person was from Côte d'Ivoire and they were treating the guy differently. Why? Because the guy had a green passport from Africa, from West Africa, different. I'm also from West Africa. Now, the different thing is that a guy who had the Ecowas passport, that's my friend from Benin, he went there and they gave him, they, they, they gave him that kind of treatment, you understand? Because you have that passport. And after that, some few months later, the guy turned Canadian and he went there and they never... So you see the, in the video, if you actually watch Teo Ana's video, when he had the passport, the Caribbean passport, he, he passed through the border, the UK border, just like that. 10 seconds. Nobody asked him anything. So I moved from Canada. I went to the UK. From the UK, I came here. And nobody ever asked me anything. And that's how it works. So I understand your, fa your feelings, Teo. I really understand your feelings because I've been there and I know how it feels. I actually vowed to myself that I will never go, to, go through any visa process where I have to 
go find uh, show documents like at work and all these kind of things because it's not fair that's what i i actually think that it's not fair so i understand it is not a beautiful thing i think ask africans need to actually sort of doing a video about this and so when i saw your video i said okay yes this is actually something that africans are going through which is not um uh, it's not a pleasant thing i hope our country or our leaders can actually do something about that because if a caribbean country can give all this we are not that far different you know i, I think we are the same people the same people so what 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 is the what is the, the the difference right now what changes why is it that other people from the other side they're giving them the chance and nigerians in nigeria a nigerian will travel with a nigerian passport one of my friends who is in france this week she just called me she's a nigerian she waited in canada to get her citizenship because of this so guys i actually wanted to do this video because it really touched my heart and congratulations once again my friend teo ena i've been following you for a very long time congratulations finally maybe one day we're gonna meet somewhere i don't know ah <sighs> it's a vraiment show <laughs> and uh, i'm really enjoying my son here thank you very much for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to help me i've not been asking but i think uh i need to so help me out we're getting to hundreds hundred subscribers then finally we move to 500 to 5000 and we move around see thank you very much for watching i really appreciate you clicking on my video and watching the video as well and so much love to you